Looks like we are all here. Um, we have a gallery of about um, 33 people this morning. Um, welcome to all of them. It, it, we are set to go. I'm assuming Mr. Percho is there, although I can't see him. But I'll call this regular meeting of Council of the Municipality of Jasper to order for June 2nd, 2020. Councillors, you have today's proposed agenda. Are there any additions, deletions, or other changes required to be made to the agenda? If there are none, may I have a motion, please, to approve the agenda as presented? Councillor Journal, thank you. All in favor? There are none opposed. That is carried. The minutes of the regular meeting of May 26th have been circulated. Are there any errors, omissions, or corrections required to be made? Those minutes. If not, um, may I have a motion, please? Councillor Janot, you're making a motion to approve the minutes? I did have a comment or a question about the minutes. It has to do with the funding for the wildflower daycare. Uh, while we made a motion to support it, there was no dollar amount mentioned in the motion and, and I think we left it to administration to find out where the money is from. But I believe that in our minutes should reflect an amount of money that has been allocated by the municipality to the wildflower daycare for their operation for the balance of the year. Otherwise, it's not going to be in any public record. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's a good point, and I, I missed that myself. Um, and I thought that the, uh, the motion was um, specific now that I think about it. Um, Two amounts, yeah. Can administration um, assist with that? Kayla, are you available to um, speak to that one? Uh, that's the motion that was made. I re-listened to yeah. the recording to make sure we uh, accurately had it. I know it had been switched around a little. Um, I think Councillor McGrath had proposed a motion that had a dollar figure. Um, and I think after Miss Daniel had indicated the cost uh, had, was an, an estimate at best, I believe council decided to leave it a bit more open to give Miss Daniel a bit more flexibility as she um, understood costs a little bit better. That's my understanding. Thank you for that. Councillor Demoto. Yeah, I was under I was under that impression from the discussion, and I also thought that we were going to get some uh, feedback. And I'm not expecting it today, but on exactly where that funding is uh, is and could come from. And uh, again, uh, that uh, it might not be the exact amount; could be more, could be less. Hopefully, that. Thank you, Councillor Butler. My understanding was that because we specified that funding should come from reserves, that a transfer out of reserves requires separate council approval anyway, so that it provided us the opportunity to deal with specifics of funding um, in due course, which goes along with what the other councillors just said. Okay. Uh, Councillor keller -Rampy. My understanding was, Marilyn, you made a the amendment um, indicating that administration should look at other funding and that come back to us and then we will put the dollar amount and take it from the reserves. So it was kind of left open. That was my understanding. If there was no other funding available from government, um, we were looking in to see if we can get the grant that's currently there that we can't use to see if um, the health services would allow us to hold on to that grant and that would make a difference. 
and then we were going to come back and visit it. And we had indicated that down the road, we would take it from reserves um, if that's what was needed. That is my understanding of last week's meeting. And I, and I share that understanding. Uh, I guess the question is simply um, the extent of council's um, monetary commitment and if that has to be confirmed. I would suggest that for the time being in relation to the minutes, the minutes are an accurate reflection of what council decided. Um, we have a few more minutes to think about it. So I would propose that uh, when we come to business arising, if there is a need to clarify the intent of that motion, because I, again, I, I think the, the minutes are, are accurate, so we can leave those, but we could deal with this again if councillors feel a need under business arising. Otherwise, we can, um, we can leave it because, as has been indicated, staff has to come back to us at some point to confirm what amounts might be separately funded and what amount might have to come from reserves, and then we will need a motion to make that transfer in any event. So I, I will leave it now. Um, if anybody wants to raise this again during business arising, I welcome them to do that. So if I can return to the question of approval of the minutes, um, might I have a motion either to approve the minutes um, as presented or um, if there are any other changes or questions required with respect to the minutes, raise those now. Councillor McGrath, that's a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Thank you. All in favor? There are none opposed. That is carried. Thank you. Uh, our standing item uh, on the agenda, item four is presentations. And again, we have the uh, ECC update from uh, Mr. Van Tegum. Thank you, Your Worship, and thank you, Council, and welcome uh, everybody that's viewing this meeting on uh, Zoom platform. As the Director of Emergency Management for the Municipality of Jasper, my responsibility is to lead the municipal response through this COVID pandemic incident. The COVID-19 pandemic situation is a public health emergency, and as such, as an Alberta Health Services has the lead over this and the jurisdiction over this incident. However, the Municipality of Jasper has the responsibility to maintain operations of all the necessary municipal functions and to support Alberta Health Services and the community as required. In order to effectively manage this incident, the Municipal Emergency Coordination Center was activated on March 12th. Given the extended duration and the unique qualities of a pandemic crisis, the Emergency Coordination Center remains functioning virtually under a partial activation, which means not fully staffed. Municipal staff currently involved, involved in the ECC are doing so on a very part-time basis and continue to perform their regular duties. Following the ICS, Incident Command System Incident Management model, there are two meetings per week and there are presently one week operational periods. The ECC operates uh, off a, a number of objectives and we'll speak to a new objective that was initiated in the last operational period. For a, a regional update, there are presently 63 state of local emergencies in operation in the province of Alberta. There are 148 municipalities that have activated an ECC. In general, in Alberta, numbers are holding steady. The vast majority of cases are in the Calgary zone and there has recently been an increase in the Edmonton zone. 10 of these cases in Edmonton recently can be traced to two private family gatherings. In Alberta, current COVID-19 cases, there are 7,044, that's up 34 cases in the last 24 hours. There has been a total of 143 deaths to date and that's up zero. Uh, there has been 6,501 recovered cases, that's up 218. And there are presently 400 active cases in the province of Alberta. In Alberta, there's also currently 53 individuals in hospital and six of those are in ICU. 
there has been 2,007 2,709 COVID-19 tests completed in the last 24 hours. And Alberta Health has opened up testing to all Albertans, whether they have symptoms or not. In Jasper, the option for COVID testing is being offered to anyone who comes to the ER, regardless of the reason. This is to increase the random testing of asymptomatic people. Therefore, if you attend the ER at Seton Hospital for a broken bone, you would also be given the opportunity or the chance to have a COVID-19 test. Seton is gradually reopening some services that were previously closed due to COVID and still maintains the curbside testing area for symptomatic and asymptomatic people. At last week's council meeting, we had a letter supporting community masking presented by five local doctors. The municipality and the province has supported a mask initiative since the onset of COVID-19. As Dr. Dina Henshaw has said, her recommendation is for Albertans to wear a mask if they are going somewhere where there will be two meters from another person, where they may be two meters from another person. And this is also supported by the Seton Hospital. The first stage has been in effect since the start of the pandemic to provide medical masks to essential service workers. To date, the province has given workers over 2.6 million procedural masks. Stage two is free masks for the public. The Masks for Albertans program is an effort which is currently ongoing. The province has announced the provision of four masks for every Albertan. Jasper should be receiving masks within the next couple of weeks and the ECC will coordinate the distribution. As mentioned in the past week, the ECC has updated its objectives to include a new objective which is to collaborate and support employees, the public and the business community with resources and messaging, re-appropriate physical distancing and masking requirements throughout the community relaunch. The ECC has initiated a staff information bulletin, which is COVID related information, will, will, which will be provided to staff on a weekly basis, similar to the ECC report that goes to council. Critical services only signs have been removed from the entrances into the community and will, re will be replaced with social distancing message signs today. We have had COVID-19 messaging posters printed and distributed throughout the business community regarding the safe relaunch guidelines, physical distance guidelines, and open for business practices. Our key messages is please respect physical distancing. And I'd like at this point to put out a shout out to Patty Pavlov at the Chamber of Commerce. And Patty and her crew have done a tremendous job uh, throughout this whole pandemic, but uh, particularly in the last month or so in, in informing the business community and providing the much needed information and uh, resources and direction to links, et cetera. So thanks to Patty and her crew. We're also working with the Rotary Club um, right now to have a number of hygiene stations placed around the community, uh, particularly the Central Business District. And as I mentioned, Jasper will be receiving uh, masks for our population from the provincial program for free. The Emergency Coordination Center has reviewed provincial directives and health guidelines and has a plan for reopening of playgrounds and the skate park once the resources become available. We are working with grocery stores to maintain a smooth, safe operation through this relaunch. And we continue to maintain alignment and messaging with our partners at Parks Canada. Yesterday, June 1st, officially trails and day use areas opened in Jasper National Park. Campgrounds in Jasper National Park will not open still until at least June 21st. And this past weekend did see an increase in visitation to the town site, particularly on Saturday. And we expect that to further increase as the campgrounds begin to reopen. Again, our message is the municipality of Jasper is committed to a gradual, safe reopening of services. As the community begins to reopen and visitation increases, it is more important than ever to take precautions to keep yourselves and others safe from COVID-19. So a reminder to everybody to stay two meters away from others, social distance. Order online or have groceries or other items delivered if possible and support local businesses. Wash or sanitize your hands frequently. Wear a mask when there is potential to be inside the two meter zone. 
And I would like to thank everybody for being patient and being kind and for working through this gradual, safe reopening together. Thank you very much. And uh, your worship, I would field any questions if there are any from council. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Van Tegum. <coughs> questions for Mr. Van Tegum. Councillor Butler. Thank you, Chief Van Tegum. You, do I understand correctly that our, our um, municipal, municipal playgrounds are still closed? And the skate park? That is correct, Councillor, yes. So you mentioned that they will be reopened when resources are available, I think you said. Um, could you clarify what resources are needed in order to allow people into the playgrounds? Well, there is guidelines for reopening that we, as I indicated, that we have to follow prior to reopening, which includes uh, some, obviously some cleaning, but the biggest um, guideline is the reinspection, which is a requirement. There's also a requirement for daily inspections of the equipment for safety reasons. And that, those are the resources that I speak to. Um, my understanding is right now operations doesn't have um, those resources in place, but they're working on it. And we do have the plan in place, so we're ready to pull the trigger at any time. So the daily inspection isn't related to COVID, it's, it's just an ongoing requirement, is that correct? That, that is correct. It's an ongoing requirement for municipal playgrounds. And there is uh, municipal staff that have special training or certification in order to be uh, able to carry out that, uh, those inspections. Thank you. You're welcome, Councillor. See no other hands raised. Oh, Councillor Demota, go ahead. Well, I just uh, I would like to. I, I'm not sure it's ECC related, but it's uh, it's definitely something uh, that was observed in town yesterday. And and just my appreciation to go out who uh, whoever thought of or was in charge of the uh, the seniors uh, parade. I thought that was great to to see in the community and, and uh, quite uplifting. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you, uh, Councillor Demota, and that was an initiative, I believe, from the CFS department, and they, they got everybody organized, and uh, it was a tremendous event. I agree. Uh, Chief Van I, I hate to, uh, to jump ahead too far in the, in the agenda, but uh, on the possibility that we might lose you before we get to um, correspondence, there is a letter um, that council has received relating to the reopening of uh, beach volleyball. Um, can you advise whether the ECC is looking at that and are there, are there requirements specific to that sport that are being addressed? We, we did discuss that last week and I do believe it was um, Director uh, McNabb that was following up on uh, obtaining the information for any protocols or guidelines for that particular activity. And I, I apologize, but to be honest, I don't have the answer on the top of my head, but I am making a note of it and I will get back to you with the correct answer on that one. Thank you. That's appreciated. Any other questions from any councillors for Mr. Van Tegum? All right, if not, uh, thank you, Chief Van Tegum, for that report. Um, you may stay around and see whether there's a call for you later, but uh, you're good for now, so thank you. Thank you. Uh, that takes us to agenda item five, business arising from the previous minutes. Is there any other business arising from the minutes of May 26th? If there is um, nothing from councillors, there's just one thing that I would like to mention. Um, when we dealt with the, the daycare issue, um, there was mention of lack of notes that we had requested from a previous meeting. Um, those were very detailed and excellent notes uh, of the director, which she used as reference when she addressed council. Uh, there was a request that those notes be provided and be made part of the public record. Um, there was an indication 
during the meeting last week that those notes weren't available. I, I just think it's important to clarify for the record that uh, that was through no fault of the director. Those uh, notes had in fact been forwarded uh, when requested. They didn't make it to council until the day of the meeting and I missed the fact that they, they arrived during the meeting and failed to, to give credit to the manager for having provided those. So if there is any lingering um, suggestion that she was not prompt and, and diligent, I want to dispel that and, and thank her for providing those notes. And I, I want to make a request to administration that those notes um, find a way to become part of the record, either as an attachment to a subsequent agenda or in some other way. But they, they were great notes. Um, council was very appreciative to have them with the intent that they become part of the record so that the public knows as well um, the basis of some of the decisions. So I just ask that at, at some point to, to complete the record, um, those notes be made formally part of the record. Um, I see no objection or other indication, um, so I can leave that. Um, is there any other business arising? If not, um, department reports, we have nothing scheduled unless I see from Mr. Bercho that there is something late arriving. Um, uh, I no, no, Thank you, Mr. Bercho. That takes us to agenda item seven, information reports, um, 7.1, um, enhancing guest experience while social distancing. Um, Ms. Pavlov, and we see you live today. Good morning. Good morning, welcome. Thank you. Go ahead, um, if, if you wish to uh, present your report. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Good morning, Council, and those who are viewing. I know that there has been a lot of um, questions surrounding the report, and so this morning uh, I intend to give you it as complete as it is at the moment, but I wanted to read a few of the parameters that were included in the, the, uh, the report while the survey was being conducted. So there were three principal questions that were asked. Are you aware of the proposal and its specifics? So looking for a yes, no answer. Are you in favor of expanded seating slash pedestrian walkway as proposed? I'll put a caveat in there that of course this um, proposal has undergone several iterations in terms of, of its, what it is called. So that was at the time. Uh, yes or no, and why would you be in favor or otherwise? And if you are in favor or otherwise, what changes to the proposal would enhance your favor or change your mind? There were 135 businesses surveyed, including hospitality, retail, service, and one nonprofit organization. In all cases, upper floor, lower floor, and non-immediate street access was surveyed. So those would be businesses whose would be located, for example, in the Clock Tower Mall or in the, where, where the dental office is, Everest Outdoor Store. So if you think of those types of businesses and certainly on Patricia Street as well. 22 businesses or organizations did not respond to the survey or were not reached at the time that the report was prepared. And that was um, as of the first submission to you, which was a week ago on Tuesday or a week ago today, rather. The data collection took place over five regular business days and one weekend day. Messages were left with each business whenever possible, noting the outstanding responses were from initial calls and messages from Friday, May the 22nd, 2020, and will remain in the queue for response until Thursday, May 28th. That is now uh, passed, so that was sent to you on Thursday evening. And there are still a few outstanding responses. I will tell you that the totals now in favor, one, I'm sorry, in favor, 55, not in favor, 27, and yes or no with values applied. So that is any kind of amendments to the proposal is also at 27. So there's a few other caveats here. Are you aware of the proposal and its specifics? I will say that many responded yes. However, when we were discussing details, clearly they were not aware of the proposal specifics in terms of scope or timeframes. Um, many believe the closure on Patricia Street was a complete closure 
and believe that the cannot closure included only the parking lane. So you can see there that there was a few things that, um, that were believed to be true at the time by those I questioned. And then at that point, I would take the time to go through the drawings with them as rendered um, at that time. Are you in favor of expanded seating and pedestrian walkways? The responses were varied with emphatic yes or no being expressed as shown in the initial number reporting and returning comments or recurring comments rather are in bold type. So what I tried to do then was take it to bullet points because it would have been a voluminous document. So those that were in favor, I'll just quickly go through the ones that have been included in bold type. I believe it is uh, an attachment this morning for council. So certainly anyone who would like to have a, a deeper dive into the comments can certainly uh, have access to those. So under the yes, um, love it. It will absolutely benefit the economic recovery and maintain social distancing. Creates a warm, welcoming atmosphere in the downtown core. It will reduce congestion for mobility challenged or those with strollers. Accommodating pedestrians is always a great thing. Compromise is key to it working. Go a step further and close Patricia Street access on the 600 block to all vehicle traffic to the grocery people market. Um, it's part of the vibe that is common in summer pedestrian areas, very positive, very relaxing. Add additional bike parking and that would make it great. Willing to adapt for the greater good. Exclude the 400 block of Patricia to accommodate post office and ease of displaced parking in the 500 and 600 blocks. Without it, business will close permanently due to meeting restrictions in place and no sidewalk seating for the 2020 season. Again, keeping in mind that these comments were made uh, two weeks ago. So we know that the, uh, the proposal has been modified somewhat. Five kilometer speed limit through the Patricia Street drive lane. Businesses wanting to partake should pay all of the associated costs and boardwalks are a great idea. Now under the no, uh, I'll caveat that with, this also includes comments from three commercial landlords. One comment starts out with insult to all businesses that are not serving, serving food or beverage. It'll be a struggle to move about with wheelchairs, strollers, walkers. Expectation of hotel guests to walk with luggage, etc., is unacceptable. Sacrificing some businesses for the greater good is not the answer. Immediate access to the operation is a must. No options are available to properly deliver the experience and maintain COVID-19 protocols. Not enough visitation expected this summer, so crowding won't be an issue. Jasper is not designed as a walking community. Pushes parking issues into residential neighborhoods. Damage to merchandise um, that would be outside, wind, rain, fading is an issue. Theft is also uh, a recurring theme. Using the alleyway between Connaught and Patricia will, be, will not be an option. It's already congested with delivery vehicles. And this individual feels pedestrian walkway or improved downtown activity will not result from expanded spaces, but will hinder retail. Now there are also a number of respondents who were, as you recall, in the yes, no category with value supplied. Uh, in other words, amendments. And again, that was 27 individuals of the total that were respondent. So in this case, addition of additional parking being designated to mobility challenged or disabilities. Addition of specifically designated single parking areas up to four cars in front of banks, pharmacies, and typically quick pickup operations such as convenience stores. 15 minute parking in angle parking or diagonal parking areas. Aesthetics are paramount to success. It has to look inviting. Enforce parking regulations by bylaw for all designated parking spaces, be they designated as 15, two hour, 30 minute. Bike lanes are a must. Too many uh, ride on the sidewalks. It's dangerous for everyone. It's acceptable as a trial for summer 2020 for sure. No real benefit to particular business, but they understand the idea. 
Damage could become a problem if tables, chairs, etc., are allowed to be out all of the time. Concern the alleyways, especially between Connaught Drive and Patricia Street, will become a free-for-all for anyone wanting to park. Tenants must be able to access their buildings and operations as they currently do with assigned parking in the alleyway. Involvement cannot be mandatory for any operation in the proposed blocks. Definitely tilted toward hospitality operations. Mandates uh, mandate all pickup and drop offs for tour groups and attractions move to the train station parking as bus tours will be down. So will allow for plenty of pickup and drop off, but still close to shops and restaurants. In favor, but it must be aesthetically pleasing, please. Whatever decision is made needs to happen very quickly to give notice to those who will have to make adjustments, construction costs, securing construction that would be required for um, boardwalk construction, for example, and cut the red tape in the application process. If it goes forward, approve or request amendments to applications quickly. So again, outstanding. This is my summary. There were no that there were four no opinions that were included in this document. Uh, three from organizations that are generally representative of all business and felt it was not appropriate at this time to comment. Uh, one of those would be the post office because again of the different iterations of the program as it has been uh, evolving. And again, it remains with 22 uh, with no response and no callback. And that is my report. Again, it is available on the website, I understand. And I will take any questions that are posed. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Pavlov. And uh, thank you for the work put into this report um, over the time it took. Uh, very much appreciated. Uh, Councillors, uh, questions for Mrs. Pavlov regarding the report? It's Councillor McGrath. Not a question, Mrs. Pavlov, just a comment. Thank you very much for all of the time and energy you put into this report. It's very much appreciated. You're very welcome. Councillor Butler. I also want to thank uh, you, Patty, for your report. It's really helpful to get the feedback. I, I guess my comment is, um, and the struggle I have, and I think honestly everyone is having, is I, I've talked to many, many people downtown about um, their views on the proposal, but I'm not sure, and, and you alluded to this, I'm not sure that most people really know what the proposal is. Um, I can't find the proposal anywhere. I've looked through all of our council minutes and it's not included there. I don't know if it's publicly posted. And um, I myself find the range of comments indicate a um, broad range of understanding as to what the proposal is. And I think that's what we as council are gonna have to deal with. If we're going to entertain some changes downtown, we have to decide, um, I guess, what the proposal is or what our proposal is. Um, I don't know if, Ms. Pavlov, you can clarify at all what um, specific pros, proposal it is that you were referencing when these questions were asked um, or if the proposal you're referencing is on the chamber website um, or if I'm missing it is it could someone answer whether it's on the town's website I know it's not in the minutes but maybe it's elsewhere my understanding councillor Butler is the proposal was originally submitted by Brett Ireland and that was approximately three weeks ago now. I believe at that time there were some photographs that were submitted and the basics of what the proposal was at that time. And the questions that were formulated were also done in discussion with the Chamber President and Mayor Ireland so that they reflected the proposal at that time. Uh, again, my understanding is it's on the website and I know in every case that I spoke to someone 
um, or left a message, I made sure that they understood the proposal based on the information I had at that time. Councilor Nimoda. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, could I follow up? Yes. So, the, um, Mrs. Pavlov, you just said that the proposal is on the website. I'm still not clear where members of the public can go to look to see. Is that the Chamber's website you're referencing? No, it, I, I believe it's on the municipal website. I will apologize that I am technically challenged and we have not updated our chamber website, but rather have been using the vehicle of things you need to know on a daily basis. Uh, we did not include it at that time. Uh, again, my apologies, I had understood it to be on the chamber, on the, uh, pardon me, municipal website. So that was where I was referring. And uh, I don't believe that it was not there. I, I also know and understand that the Fitzhugh uh, clearly published those photos and many people did see that and follow the initial story as proposed. Could, some, I, could someone from administration clarify whether the proposal that we're being asked to consider is on the municipal website? And and. Once we've got that answer, I'm done. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, uh, Councillor Butler. Um, and I, I will um, reiterate that request or question from Councillor Butler to administration um, about how the public now might access um, the proposal in whatever form it happens to be. And I appreciate that at a subsequent meeting um, Brett Ireland addressed us again, and, and there was discussion at that time about um, boardwalks, which was different than the initial proposal. My understanding is that um, because it was presented initially, I think it was May 12th, um, the recording of that council meeting ought to have been uploaded to YouTube. There should be a link, I think, somewhere on our website, but whether the proposal itself can be disengaged from the entire recording of the council proceedings of that day, I'm not sure, but I would invite um, Mr. Virtue or Ms. Nadon um, perhaps to address that if they can. Your Worship, my hand's up, but I don't think you're seeing. Oh, um, I apologize. Um, you are on a different screen, but you've got my attention, so please proceed. Thank you. Um, the proposal is on our website. It was submitted after the agenda deadline, so that's why it's not in the original uh, agenda at which the presented was uh, given by Mr. Ireland, Brett Ireland. And uh, the challenge too is that this proposal changed significantly by the time it came back to council about three weeks later, which was last week. So the latest renderings are available in last week's council agenda. Um, and Brett Ireland at that time presented some, uh, uh, understood and acknowledged that there was a, quite a bit of concern in the business community and that his intent was not to uh, work against any specific sector and that, uh, so those latest renderings were presenting options as opposed to the first iteration of the presentation which had parking lanes closed on Patricia but not driving lanes and things like that. So. Um, yeah, so that's where that's at. So which proposal is currently in front of council for consideration? I don't think that the first version that came out three to four weeks ago is, is what the current proposal is. Uh, I would refer back to Brett Ireland's presentation from last week and council also gave administration direction last week to uh, do a bit more research and provide more information on the Canmore model. So that is my understanding of where that request in front of council is. I think Mr. Ireland's uh, conclusion at the end of his presentation last week was that an option that would work for all sectors of the business uh, downtown core would be his favorite option. And uh, yeah, I hope that helps. Thank you for that, uh, Mr. Don. Uh, I see you, Councillor Demota, but uh, I'm going to return first to Councillor Butler to see whether he has any follow-up um, in response to his inquiries. Uh, 
thank you. Um, I, I guess all I can say is I can't find it on the website. Um, and and, and I, I struggle with still the, the sense that's out there in the community that there's just a very wide variance in people's understanding of what the current state of the conversation is. And I think we just need to clarify that today so that the public can be clear on what uh, council is or is not considering. But I assume maybe that's the conversation we're going to have. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Demota, you were next. I see Mr. Furcho with his hand up who may want to respond if you can defer. Oh, by all means. I'd, no, I'm, I'm, going, I'm okay. I'd, I'd like thank to hear what uh, Mr. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Furcho then. Um, thank you, Your Worship. And just back to Council, I think, you know, in fairness, there was a number of proposals on the table, um, anything from closing the streets to closing complete lanes. And um, if we wanted to get into the next item, that was um, Council's direction to follow the Canmore model, which we then, you know, had been in discussions with Canmore, um, our manager of licensing and enforcement, got that information and just, I'll, um, let me know if you can see that image is what's in the report now. Does that come through for everybody? So that's everybody, but I can see it. Yeah, so that that's what we're kind of what council was leaning towards. That's what Canmore does. Although the um, application document sh shows a few seats out in the parking lane, the intent is that it's really a walk around. We'd prefer the walk around model um, given safety. When people are walking around, then they tend to, as Neil put it, be more aware um, of the vehicles going by than if they're sitting in a car comes along and happens to bump into that platform. So we're, our preference is from administration side, if we're going to move to the Canmore model is a walk around style. Um, the application, the process, it's all attached to the agenda. Um, this is an image just so that everybody's on the same page, so to speak, of what, um, what we're thinking and what council had directed us to look towards was simply this image right here. So for clarity's sake, I thought I'd put that up and then maybe when we get into the conversation, that would be where we would work towards. Otherwise, if council directs otherwise, then we can certainly go there. But that that was the direction it, it appeared to us that we were leaning. Thank you, Mr. Furcho. Uh, Councillor Demota. Well, I just, I too wanted to thank Ms. Pavlov for uh, her tireless efforts and, and her chamber crew. If if she's the only, if, Patty, if you're the only crew, then you know, congratulations to you for uh, getting that info and know that uh, it took a lot of work and um, I appreciate your persistency, particularly with the people that did respond right away, the non-responders. I know that you tried uh, tried hard to get all the information. So um, it's valuable for us and, and appreciate the work. So I may also add, uh, Mayor Ireland, um, Brett Ireland's uh, initial presentation, I believe was on the May 5th, um, uh, council meeting and uh, I had requested to see if we could get that posted on YouTube as well as the April 29th I believe uh, meeting that was also recorded on Zoom but somehow uh, through some technical issues we, we had lost those so um, there was an important report from um, Tourism Jasper that uh, was quite interesting for me and, and I still have yet to, to find that as well. It's not on uh, our website or or at least it was and I can't find it and I apologize if I could be directed somehow, not right now, but uh, someone could direct me there and then I could post that elsewhere. Thank you, uh, Councillor Demota. If there are no other, oh, I'm sorry, Councillor McGrath. I'm sorry, I think my um, comments are better for agenda item number 7.2. Thank you, then um, I will, um, in the absence of any other questions for Ms. Pavlov, thank her again for her work, um, the work of the Jasper Park Chamber of Commerce, and for that report. Um, I think we've exhausted the questions. I'm, I'm sure you were exhausted before we started answering or asking questions, but thank you for your, your diligence in that. Um, it will be useful as we proceed to the next item, which is uh, agenda item 7.2, public spacing in public places. 
And uh, that was a report from Mr. Jones. And who is presenting that? Is Mr. Jones there or is that your presentation, Mr. Virchow? Um, Your Worship, I'll speak to that. Um, Mr. Jones is available uh, to answer questions as well. Um, we have, uh, as I put the image up on the agenda for Council or on the on the screen, it the the conversation from Council did lean towards the in uh, parking lane uh, walk around uh, that image that I had put up. I can put it up again, but I think everybody's seen it. It's uh, the intent being that the business expands into the uh, sidewalk. And then the uh, parking stall in front of the business would have a platform that allows people to walk around the sidewalk in that one location. And that's what's used in Canmore. There are a few varieties where there actually is seating out in the parking spot. We're not as in favor of that. Um, although the application form shows that example, um, it just puts people sitting uh, down at bumper height out in the traffic and it's not quite as good as the walk around um, where the people are comfortably close to the business access for the um, servers or, or retail staff to keep track of their goods is, is a lot closer um, in the walk around and just simply directs traffic around rather than through. So um, that was where council was leaning at the last meeting. So we simply have this information. We have a good relationship with Kenmore. It would be easy for us to get all their materials and adopt it for uh, Jasper if that's where we'd like to go and get this program off the ground fairly quickly if that's council's direction. Otherwise that's, uh, that's the presentation and uh, myself and Neil are available for questions. Thank you, Mr. Furcho. Questions for administration? Councillor McGrath. Thank you, Mayor Ireland. And thank you, Mr. Furcho for this report. And thank you to Mr. Jones as well for preparing it. I, I feel very conflicted in this decision making process and and I feel well I guess very divided and that's a good reflection of the community and I very much feel that the Canmore approach as is presented to us on our agenda today is a really safe compromise for the community of Jasper to move forward with this summer being that businesses will require this very soon to actually make a difference in them getting their feet under them for this season. I also feel that the, the social distancing and the people aspect, the social aspect is really what this project is about and what the presentation from Mr. Ireland was about. And we're not really addressing it with the Canmore approach. You know, we're helping some businesses expand and utilize open space, which is of course a healthier option, but it doesn't necessarily take really great care of social distancing. So I'm, I'm conflicted and I, I love the idea of, of some closure and, and more distance and a huge appeal for the downtown vibe. And I'm definitely, that's in line with my values and, and where my, instincts guide me, but I don't feel like it's a safe enough route to make a decision in the next week or so about it when there's 27 businesses that feel like at the end of this summer, they could not be in business and that could be, you know, say my fault as a counselor. And I, I couldn't handle that weight on my shoulders as businesses are already struggling and this is already going to be one of the hardest years that they've experienced, but I am constantly reminded of the purpose of this is, is for people and it's for safety. So I'm, I'm grappling with um, my values and which direction to move in, but I definitely see all sides. Thank you, Councillor McGrath. Other questions or comments? Councillor Wilson. Okay, so I think um, we're on the right track here. Um, what I don't want to do is close down completely, uh, Patricia or Kanat uh, to to um, drive in. I think that's uh, not something that we need to do. Um, but what I'm thinking uh, is minimizing 
the drive or sorry, slowing the driving, uh, which in turn uh, gets people to see what stores are available. So s slowing the driving, uh, minimizing it to one lane, the air, the uh, restaurants uh, and stores that want to use that uh, sidewalk or increased uh, parking area for uh, patio or for uh, vending, they do that. In turn, the areas um, where there will would be parking are quite a bit wider into the street. So we can turn that into angle parking. Adding additional parking to, for uh, in, in an area where it is is always, you, you never find parking. So we're adding parking in, to the, in front of the stores that want to add parking. We're also adding seating and we're making more space for um, uh, social distancing. I think it's a win-win. We're slowing traffic. Uh, why do we need two lanes on Patricia? Why do we need two lanes on Connaught? Um, yeah. You know, I think that's almost a bit of a no-brainer, at least for this year. And we try it out. Um, we bring more people into the downtown core. We get them out of their cars and they shop and they eat and they walk and they spend money. Thank you, uh, Councillor Wilson. Councillor DeMota. Yeah, I'm Again, I'm, I'm no ac expert on traffic and, and guiding flow and all those other things. Um, I like what's coming forward with the uh, with the boardwalk proposal. Uh, again, I agree with um, street uh, speed limits being lowered. Um, I just, to me, I don't. Again, I'm using the crystal ball scenario. We're we're uncertain about how summer is going to look, but we've lost all our tour business um, at tour buses. Uh, our trains aren't coming until September, uh, at least right now, and so there's going to be a lot lot more people um, in vehicles and I call it rubber traffic and I think um, if like uh, Councillor Wilson said there's going to be limited parking in the community and particularly people that want to have access to, to certain areas so uh, I think this is a good compromise but I also agree with uh, with Ms. McGrath on um, you know the whole premise of this is uh, social distancing for people in the community. So I, I think that there needs to be a, a better devised plan. I'm still concerned about motif. Who's going to initiate the building of the boardwalks? Um, is there going to be, who's going to do it? Um, I know that Banff, uh, I believe that they go and build it and then they charge a fee um, for the, the use of it. I don't think we have the resources to do that. Uh, so there has to be some further planning uh, towards this to make it look and work properly. Thank you. Councillor keller Um I think in order to move it forward, I think if we take the Canmore model, we slow down the traffic. And I want to apologize for last week. When I talked about bus game, being in the parks around, I didn't mean the seven spots downtown wouldn't um, happen. What I wanted to say was that, you know, if we were also allowing extra buskers or extra spots that could be in the parks and we could also have people that are artists that want to paint in that, that it would just create a nice atmosphere that people could social distance out into the parks as they walk around town. Um, in order to move forward, I think we should take the Canmore model, slow the traffic down, as Councillor Wilson said, absolutely, five to 10 kilometers going down Patricia Street. I think it's hard to say, okay, so the grocery people, where do they park in the parking lot, but then besides, and then what about the pharmacies and the banks? So I think it's easier just to move it, adopt the Canmore model, and, um, take it each day as they come. Um, if you look at Canard, we have a hotel. We've actually a hotel boat on both streets. We have one park place in and we have the Whistlers in. And both want access to their hotels. So to close down the street on one side on Canard, we're affecting those businesses. So I, I think we have to kind of keep it fair. So it's, 
if I'm understanding Councillor Wilson, you're saying that they just have one driving lane, but they can come in and park? Uh, yeah, just to clarify, my idea was that uh, you would uh, narrow the road. So the road would be in the, still in the middle. The mi I, I, I'm not sure how uh, the um, lines work at that point, but we, you know, speed is at a minimum. So I, I wouldn't say, no, just get rid of one drive lane. I would say uh, narrow both, both drive, la drive lanes. So there's the width of one drive lane right down the middle. And people can still pull into park. Yeah, yeah. And then, then the parking then would be uh, angle parking. Again, even it would slow traffic even more if people having to uh, back out and angle park. And I, I think it would just kind of really keep people there, slow people down, um, make it a more pedestrian friendly, friendly area, but also to keep, uh, keep access with cars. I like your idea of angling parking. Um, many years ago, I suggested that, but when we got the transportation study back, um, I was told that angling parking was very bad because we were backing out and we could cause accidents. So, I mean, I really, I, for years I've said we should have angling parking to create more parking, but at that time I was told that that was not a good idea. Okay. Thank you, uh, Councillor Demota and then Councillor Butler. Yeah, maybe this uh, question's more lined up for Mr. Furcho and, and his staff. Um, I'm. I'm liking what's coming out of the out of these discussions and and what Mr. Wilson and, and uh, Ms. Keller and Ampe have been saying. Um, what type of work needs to go behind uh, taking out driving lanes and creating lines for angle parking and things like that? And just um, again, we we have a timeline here which people desire and need to get this project going if we can get it going. And then, you know, we're talking about changing a lot of things up. And again, it's, I, I just don't have the uh, knowledge to be able to do that. Mr. Furcho, go ahead. Um, Your Worship, through to Councillor Demota, I guess just a couple of things to keep in mind as we go through this. So um, uh, what I heard Councillor Kalarampi say that is absolutely true, you know, modern uh, traffic uh, practices are to to sort of move away from that angle parking because you do back into the moving traffic not that it isn't done everywhere but just it is one of those things to be aware of um, if we combine that with a reduced speed limit it could probably be done fairly safely but um, you know that requires simply paint marking the other thing that I wanted to get to is um, Jasper is I think the only place in Canada that's a municipality we don't have control of our land use and planning um, so what we're proposing is a commercial use of public space. And when we did the uh, commercial use of public space bylaw prior to that, we did some pilot projects. So um, then if you recall, we did public uh, consultations for everybody around there. We did consultations on the lease values of the space. We uh, took that to PDAC. We went through the hearings. They also solicited public feedback. We had to go through the hearings. And then um, we did get approval to do the sidewalk seating. Um, for this expanded use of space, um, I've been in discussions with parks. If we did it for one year with the intent that it's for um, uh, social distancing is the purpose and it's a one year project only, um, just keep that in mind that uh, it not, not permanent until we actually probably have to go back through some type of a variance process for the land use aspect of this project um, prior to anything becoming permanent, just like we did with the sidewalk seating because it is uh, contrary to um, institutional land use, the commercial um, use of that institutional space. So that's the one little uh, piece that's outside of our jurisdiction to think about. But everything that so far council has said, and I'll wait for final decisions of council, um, certainly are doable. The uh, bylaw can be adopted to um, move forward with the Canmar model, uh, with the exception of we have some pretty firm wording in our bylaw around who has to pay for that improvement and that is the business so if we want to move away from that we'd have to modify the bylaw in that regard other than that um, our bylaw uh, would allow the camera model to just be adopted so so that's just the technical side of it but certainly waiting for council to you know give direction which way they'd like to go on this thank you mr furcho uh councillor butler and then councillor journal well i have a few comments this is a really good 
conversation. Um, I really like Councillor Wilson's idea. It's an intriguing thought that we could, you know, sort of sacrifice traffic flow space in favor of parking space by adopting one lane of traffic and angle parking. It seems like a really intriguing idea, though I'm I'm concerned about Mr. Fitchell's point that when you have angle parking and people backing out into the only lane of flowing traffic, that's that's quite a difference from people backing out of angle parking where there are two lanes of flowing traffic. So I think it's a really interesting idea. My problem with it is that it seems to me that um, Making changes of that extent require would require, I think, quite a quite a bit of infrastructure change. It seems to me that quite a bit of consultation around the logistics of traffic flow would be required, and I just don't know if it would be doable um, in any kind of cost-effective way that we would should be looking at, given that this all could be could be just for one season. Um, the advantage of the sort of Canmore model that we talked about, where essentially a business can decide how they want to use the parking spaces outside their own business has the advantage of being, um, I think, pretty readily doable. It achieves a reasonable social distancing outcome. And it's pretty easy to translate into um, a format where the business has to pay for the changes because I, I, think, I think we have consensus that that's the way we should move forward. So. I find myself on side with um, what is undoubtedly a compromise, but that would be sort of going business frontage by business frontage. And if a business wants to extend into the parking lanes, then they would do so at their own expense. I'm not concerned about motif. Um, we, our current sidewalk seating, we have not really imposed a motif and people have come up with a variety of creative ways to put up barriers and fencing. And um, I think while it is not very consistent, it is not unpleasant. And I'm afraid that if we start getting into conversations about what, I don't know, what kind of railing should be offered and so on, um, we'll probably still be talking about this in August. Um, my last point is the concern of social distancing. I don't think we can leave the status quo. I don't think we can allow the status quo where a business can take up half of the public sidewalk for seating because that reduces the width of the sidewalk so much that it becomes really difficult to pass people walking by in any kind of a safe way. So that's something we haven't really talked about, but what would we do about someone who, a business that wishes to go with the status quo close off half of the public sidewalk, leaving, I don't know what that is, only about a meter for people to pass by on the street. And that seems to me, to Councillor McGrath's point about social distancing, to be a worry. So with that proviso, I'm concerned about those that want to stick with the status quo. I'm pretty much in favor of what I think we're calling the Canmore model right now. Thank you, Councillor Butler. Councillor Journeau. Well, it's already June 2nd and all the proposals that, we're, that we are putting forth here is, uh, ex is ex extensive. It would not be got, done on time. Uh, I, would, I would go back to what was originally proposed and kind of indicate that as a trial. Uh, certainly there are businesses who are really in favor of this. So for example, the, the brew pub, uh, I would allow them to extend the, in, into the parking immediately in front of there, uh, them and a few others, whoever wants to, and, and then study the impact. Uh, uh, they're anxious to do it at their expense. It does not cost us any money. i not, all the proposals that I see in the, you know, kind of more and so on and so forth, this extensive requires engineering, uh, you know, a lot of time delays. Uh, I, I just, I just don't see that working for the present year. The social distancing for the sidewalk, I've been uh, uh, reminded that the, what used to be four feet, which was the available seating on the sidewalk was four feet from the edge of the curb is now two meters. So I noticed that the group have adjusted their, their uh, distancing so that there is a two meter sidewalk. 
but there's very, very, very few businesses who can allow that to happen. So your sidewalk seating is already having to be altered and changed because of COVID. And uh, I would say that just allow a handful of businesses that were that want to try this seating or extended seating into the parking area in front of their business only for the summer. Councillor Demota. I always like uh, Councillor Jarnot's approach, keep it simple. And I think what we have today is uh, something that's simple to start off with. And, and I agree with that. And if, if we have to make amendments or, or changes to other ideas that might come about it, I think uh, expediency is, is the, uh, should be the uh, concern here now. I think we have some good information. I, I like uh, Mr. Jones's um, details in, in the uh, permitting. And I think we should we should go forward with that, and then if we run into uh, some issues, and we we start to address them as they arise. Um, I did have another point, but it's escaping now. But that's the main point I wanted to make. Thank you, Councillor Demota, Councillor McGrath. Thank you. I I very much feel that those are really important points to to focus on expediency, to focus on simplicity to make the permitting process easy and straightforward and as the governing body of the businesses to be very flexible right now and very understanding and just open with our businesses to try to make it as great for all as possible this season. We know that our businesses are under extreme amounts of stress and under extreme amounts of pressure. And if we can just have a very easy, fluid summer where we just work with them to find out exactly the best compromise for those that are in favor and to not at the same time negatively impact anyone else. But I think the, the downtown revitalization um, conversation should definitely continue and, and look at next summer. And, you know, I don't necessarily think that there's any evidence showing that social distancing is going anywhere anytime soon. So I think that the long-term planning of the downtown is certainly a, a really vibrant conversation that we should continue. Um, but let's get forward with an idea for, for this summer, being that it is June now, and um, make it as simple as it can be for our businesses. Councillor Demota. Yeah, my uh, my question again. This might be for Mr. Furcho, uh, Mr. Jones, and it's a question on liability. And um, just because we we might be directing people closer to traffic, as well as engaging from a, a, a public sidewalk onto a private boardwalk, and um, there might be some issues. I know that in the past we had uh, discussions about uh, allowing. Um, electrical cords across uh, sidewalks in the winter time and there were, were certain issues behind that so I just don't know if those apply to this and, uh, and and who would be liable for any injury or other concerns that may arise from um, the transitions from our public sidewalks to the boardwalks. Mr. Furchell? Um, Mr. Jones I don't know if you have any specifics on that but just you know in terms of general liability with the municipality um, depending on what standards are set um, if we you know we definitely work with our insurance provider um, going forward on on this proposal if that's where council chooses to go but for instance with sidewalks we have in our standards um, a, a differential of dist of heights um, so when a sidewalk shifts and moves um, and it exceeds that height. I don't have it in front of me right now. That's where you see where we go around and we grind the uh, the sidewalks um, because we need to get it down. So if we set a standard and the business community hasn't met that standard, you know, we have to do something about that to ensure that that meets that standard or have them remove it. Because if we allow it to remain and somebody trips and falls, then yes, we are on the hook. We deal with uh, trip and fall lawsuits every year in Jasper and our insurance company handles those for us. So um, in this case, we simply, whatever the standard is, just ensure that the standards are met by any platform that's put in. So that hopefully that. Thank you. Right, thank you for that. Um, I just, I, I want um, for clarity, Mr. Furcho, to just go back to the um, direction from council a week ago, and that was to review our existing 
commercial use of public space by law to confirm whether any changes are required to be made. My concern, as I expressed last week, was that it is not abundantly clear to me that our current commercial use of public space by law accommodates um, the opportunity for retail or other than restaurants um, to move on to the sidewalk. I mean, it was initially the proposal was to allow sidewalk seating um, for food service uh, establishments, and we constructed a bylaw to allow that. There are some permissive sections in the bylaw, and I, I just want to be clear from your perspective whether administration is satisfied that no changes are required to our existing bylaw um, to allow any interested business on a public street to move out onto the sidewalk, whatever the nature of that business. Your Worship, the, the bylaw gives pretty broad discretion to the CAO um, as a delegated authority under that bylaw. Um, so we believe that we can accommodate these with the current bylaw. And as I mentioned earlier, it's the fee structure um, that uh, is, there's a fee structure that is available for sidewalk seating. And there's also um, the provision that the improvement is paid for by the business. So that part would need uh, changes to the bylaw if we wanted to change that part. Um, but other than that, in terms of the, the use of the space um, under the discretion afforded the CAO and the bylaw, we, we feel it can be accommodated. So no problem there. But just if we're talking to changes in the money, that's the only thing. All right, so I, I wanted to return to Councillor uh, McGrath's initial comments, and I, I appreciate um, the conflicting interests here. The proposal, when it first came to us on May 5th or 12th, whatever the date was, um, was clearly um, articulated as an issue of guest experience and public spacing. Uh, of course, it has economic ramifications, but it wasn't presented um, as an economic solution. It was presented as a way for us to address social distancing for our guests and to enhance their experience. And I am still personally motivated by that. Um, I am I'm prepared to accept what has been described as a compromise, but the compromise really has been a compromise with respect to business interests rather than accommodation of our guests. And I am concerned with the possibility that as we are now re-welcoming guests to our community, that there is a level of discomfort which might discourage them from attending at all. Um, even with the, the boardwalk solution, we have pinch points on our sidewalks um, where there will be no expansion and we will compromise safety of our guests. That's a concern, but I, I don't know how we get around it. And I, I'm fully in favor of what has been discussed as a compromise solution because it it balances interests of businesses but our primary focus should still be on the guest experience and um, if building boardwalks does it then well it, it cannot hurt in any event but it, it may not create all we want and so while I, I support where i think we're going i do make note of the fact that the canmore model that we may be proposing to adopt is a pre-existing model. This is not a response to uh, COVID-19 and social distancing. And in fact, Canmore has taken it a step further and closed two blocks of Main Street entirely. So they've got the boardwalks, but they've also said to allow better social distancing and improve the guest experience, we will go further. Banff has done the same. So um, I, I accept that we are not those communities. We have a different dynamic here. We have different, um, customer use of, of facilities here and businesses here. And so I accept all of that, but I am motivated as well by expediency. As Councillor Juneau said, it's already June 2nd. We started welcoming guests back into our community yesterday. I don't think we can wait very much longer. Um, these things still have to be constructed. There's much work to be done. So I would be comforted today if we could give direction, if administration is satisfied that they have the tools under the existing bylaw, have an understanding with Parks Canada that for the basis of a trial period for the remainder of this season, this can be accomplished without um, extensive and um, time-consuming forays to PDAP, then I would like to give some direction and let them proceed. 
because we we have to do something. And in the meantime, I am also intrigued by Councillor Wilson's proposal. And we could start with boardwalks and still consider whether we have the resources to change um, traffic flow and slow the traffic, um, reduce the lanes and allow a different style of parking. It doesn't have to be all at the same time. We could start with the boardwalks and, and see where else we can go. But I would certainly appreciate it. Um, and I think the business community would appreciate it if we could make some sort of direction um, relatively quickly on this. And it's now been before us for about a month. So it is time. Um, Councillor, sorry, uh, Mr. Furcho and then Councillor DeMolder. Um, Your Worship, since Neil's on, uh, I'm just going to see if he's ready to speak to this. I didn't prepare or ask him to present, but something Councillor Butler raised and something what you were just sort of getting at here is the the pinch points in the existing um, sidewalks with sidewalk seating. We have not approved very many sidewalk seating permits for this year because of the social distancing requirements. <clears throat> so I know um, Neil's been working on that with the businesses that did want uh, sidewalk seating. Are you available to speak to that, Neil? Yes, I am. Good morning, everybody. Uh, at the moment, we have I've had seven applications. Uh, one of them being a totally new one. Uh, I've approved five. Unfortunately, I've had two, uh, along with the agreement of the business, denied one, and we have three in process. Uh, the uh, permits are given based on a diagram of uh, clearances that are required that was put together by myself and uh, the Public Health, Alberta um, Health Services. And that was given out to the businesses to base their seating plans, which they submitted to me. I submit to public health. So public health uh, approves them and, or gives um, guidance uh, on what needs to be changed. Um, I pass that back to the businesses. At the moment, with a little bit of um, experience with uh, setting these up, now uh, I've, uh, as soon as I've got the approval from public health, I ask the business to set up their sidewalk seating. I go down with a tape measure and because sometimes the seating plans don't uh, translate on into the physical world. So it was a case of going down there, measuring, making sure that it's all uh, appropriate to the diagram and then uh, approving or denying uh, the permit based on what we see on the ground. Uh, as I said, uh, we've had seven applications uh, five have been approved, uh, once denied, and that's about it. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Councillor McGrath. In line with your comments, Mayor Ireland, for looking at this as residential and visitor safety, primarily, if we went ahead and granted permission for businesses to go ahead with building their boardwalks in a timely manner. And I still think that they should be aesthetically pleasing and consistent, but I know that that's not everyone's opinion. If we were to reduce speed limits on Connaught and Patricia, and in line with Councillor Wilson's idea. So a lot of what I'm hearing from the businesses is that they're concerned about us taking away their parking so that we would impact their customers and their clientele. And if we moved traffic to one lane and then we still had parking on both sides, but we opened up about a maybe a two meter distance on each side that used to be parking to expand walking space, which is very much what Brett Ireland presented to us. I think that we could probably achieve both things, but I, I think as far as expediency and, and simplicity, if we were to just grant the boardwalks to be designed in, in a more expedient fashion, then we could spend the next few weeks talking about, about the other measures such as closing traffic and painting new lines. And I don't know what kind of professional um, expertise has to be used to make those types of decisions on how to design new parking and whatnot. But I'm 
I'd like to spend a little bit more time talking to the businesses that did have concerns because everyone that approached me not in favor was thinking that their parking was going to be removed where we will lose some parking for the boardwalks but then if you reduce the lane of traffic to one and you still have parking on two sides there's actually no loss in parking and and therefore i believe that some of the opposition might be scaled down or or more um, content to move forward thank you councillor mcgrath councillor devota uh, I wanted to thank you first for um, wrapping every, every every idea up and, and bringing uh, what's been going on in other communities in your comments. And uh, yeah, grateful for hearing that. And um, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Jones for, for being on this quickly. And uh, I've been hearing back that everything's done uh, very professionally and he's diligent and uh, nothing but positive stuff coming that way. So thank you, Mr. Jones. And I think um, the only other thing that I wanted to do is, is while this is going on, is, is revisit the speed limits in the downtown core if we're moving in the direction of uh, taking up uh, the parking cells with the boardwalks. And I, I think when we're moving people close, closer to moving traffic, that that should be considered uh, just for this summer as a trial with everything else. Um, I'm not going to suggest a speed. <laughs> I don't want to go down that road again with uh, my fellow counselors, but uh, have our professionals come back uh, with their recommendations if they uh, see need if they see the need for that uh, going with the boardwalks. Thank you, Councillor Demota. Anything else, this Councillor Wilson? Yeah, just to add to. Um my original idea there yeah we don't definitely don't have to go towards angle parking this year uh you know that does seem like it could be a lot a lot of work but my original thought was when i'm when i was looking at the drawings um the boardwalks didn't really add enough space uh for social distancing i thought um so i just wanted to give the opportunity to push them out into the drive lane on either side um this year to add that ability to distance uh, because that, uh, again, Mr. Ireland, you, you had suggested that that was the original intent. And I think by adding more space uh, for pedestrians, that's what we should be going for. But it also in turn adds a little bit more space for the patios as well. Um, yeah, so I guess that, uh, like I would, I would like to give, if, if uh, councillors agree, uh, direction to follow that up a little bit more and I don't I don't know if uh, um, sorry I've lost train of thought here uh, Rico go ahead Councillor Devon I don't know if I could pick up your train of thought but it happens to me often so I'm glad I'm not I'm not the only one um, I'm just asking what's being suggested here because I'm, I'm trying to um, picture it in my mind um, are both of you saying um, take the existing parking lanes and making them pedestrian areas and then the first adjacent driving lane turn that into a parking lane and then have the the middle lanes as as the the drive areas yeah yeah just one one driving lane down the middle and then uh where uh, businesses want to encroach into the uh, parking lane, they do. But then the uh, pedestrian uh, boardwalk can be larger and in turn offer more uh, distancing where where, uh, where they need to detour around uh, the patio seating. Councillor keller -Hanty. So, so Councillor Ms. Councillor Moda, if I'm understanding right, so if we take Patricia Street, okay? And so we'll take something else restaurant. So they could come out to the edge. Then the boardwalk could come out past the parking lane out a little farther. So extend that. And the same can happen on the other side. So we have one driving lane down the center, but then anybody can, so on front of the pharmacy, 
where the parking lane is now would come out a little bit more for pedestrian and then they could park in front of that. Would that be, is that how you see it? Yeah, so if there was no, if there was no boardwalk, there's just parking as usual. And so, you know, and the sidewalk is as wide as, as it is wherever it is, right? But, uh, which I right. think is wide enough for social distancing. So, so parking, then if parking remains for every business that doesn't want uh, a patio, but then the boardwalks are uh, in, encroach into the drive lane um, somewhat. Uh, so then the whole sidewalk can be used, uh, maybe even some of the par uh, parking, depending on width, um, but then it just offers a little bit more space for patio as well as um, pedestrians. So just coming down Patricia Street, so we'll say like, you know, the pharmacies, the bank, the pharmacy, the stores there, they're not doing it. So they, the regular parking will be there again with the laundromat and the grocery stores. So there, they will probably still be two lanes of driving. Could be, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah just trying to head around it. Yeah. Yeah, I like the idea. Is it also possible that like, you know, that the buskers and people that want to um, paint and that, can we not open up Robson Park as well? Like, cause right now we have six spots for busking downtown. You know, on Saturday, I was around um, Jasper and there was all these neighborhood concerts and it was really beautiful. And I compliment everybody um, out there that were out playing music on their porches. And, and I think it would create a nice vibe downtown that if we could open up the Robson Park, should the buskers that are all fully licensed downtown want to continue after their time lot is finished and they wanted to go to the park and continue to busk or invite other musicians out. I think it would just compliment or if somebody wanted to come out and paint their art, they could. It would give it nice vibrancy. Thank you, Councillor Kelleher MP. I think we can return to that. Councillor DeMoto. I know, I, I think my questions were more uh, based on Cannot Drive and not Patricia um, because I was talking about the four lanes and I was just trying to get in my head if, uh, other councillors were saying keep one driving lane open on the on the business side and then keeping the turning the other driving lane into a parking lane and then the existing parking lanes are where pedestrians go that's what i think okay right i i think it's um perhaps safe to say that council should not um on no notice um become traffic engineers in any sense. Um, it, it's, a, it's a viable um, idea and it needs to be pursued. Um, and there seems to be agreement among councillors that it is something that should be pursued. So distilling what I have heard today, I wonder whether council is comfortable with um, the following direction to administration. First, uh, a direction to administration to proceed with a boardwalk program under our existing commercial use of public space bylaw, following the Canmore practice, which is open to all businesses, and a further direction that administration report, report back to council on an expedited basis with respect to the possible reconfiguration of driving and parking lanes and speed limits to accommodate physical and social distancing in the downtown core. Is, is that where we wound up this morning? Councillor Butler, you, you are forming a question, I can see. <laughs> is it that obvious? <laughs> can you... Can you see the wheels turning, grinding? Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in favor of the boardwalk concept. I'm very cautious about anything that closes traffic lanes, but I mean only that I'm cautious. I, I don't mean I'm against it, but I, I think one thing we've heard pretty clearly from the downtown businesses is a great deal of opposition to 
um, closing traffic lanes because it, it is seen, I think, by many in the community as something that benefits, you know, one type of business to maybe great detriment to other kinds of businesses. So I'm willing to look at the idea of restricting flow on Patricia to one lane. If we can demonstrate that that would be done in a way that actually doesn't overly restrict access for those businesses. Um, I'm pretty convinced. I'm, I'm convinced by arguments I've heard from many, mostly retailers, about just how important vehicular access and availability of parking is to their businesses. And I really am con con um, feeling cautious about taking a step that might, you know, almost drive another nail into <laughs> the coffin that some of these businesses may experience. So I think I'm okay with your wording where we're committing to um, sort of individual business fronting board fronted boardwalks at those businesses discretion and at their expense while we look at moving in the direction, direction of Councillor Wilson's suggestion that we might live with one lane of moving traffic, depending on how we think that would impact the businesses. And that would also provide those downtown businesses to sort of weigh in on that option, because I still feel that there's been a lot of, um, of opinion around the idea that maybe Patricia Street would be closed altogether. And if we're saying now Patricia Street will not be closed altogether, but we're thinking about one lane traffic, as a consideration, maybe we can get some feedback there. So is, <laughs> Your Worship, do you think I'm saying essentially what you're proposing for direction? Yes, I, I'm comfortable um, with all of that. I, and I, and I, I totally agree that um, if we simply direct administration to come back with a report about what things would look like, we can then have some indication whether parking in fact is increased um, by reducing one lane of travel. Um, and maybe that is the, the benefit that those other businesses um, will, will recognize as, as truly a benefit to them. So not, not closing driving, but reducing lanes to increase parking. Um, and because as they all recognize, um, people have to park somewhere to get out of their car to spend money. Um, they're not going to spend it from driving by. So uh, I, I, I agree that, that um, your suggestions are, are no different than my intent. Um, study it first, see what we've got, and then we will have something more definitive um, that can be um, made subject to public comment uh, from affected businesses, but from the rest of the community as well. But at least then we're dealing, um, unlike where we started earlier today, not quite sure what proposal we were talking about. So let's put some parameters around it and continue to the discussion. Yeah. Councillor uh, Wilson and then Councillor McGrath. Yeah, just to add to uh, another um, point there, I guess we have to uh, accommodate uh, taxi drop off as well. So uh, where, where would that be possible? We might need a couple spots along each block uh, for um, short term pull in um, and pick up. Thank you for that. Councillor McGrath. Thank you for summarizing the conversations, Mayor Ireland. I, I agree with that direction of boardwalks um, happening right away, if possible. Then um, really focusing our efforts on bringing more attention to our downtown core, making sure that there's no reduction in parking in the downtown core, perhaps as Councillor Wilson suggested, designating handicapped seniors parking, taxi and, and bus lane, or sorry, spaces in the parking section. We need to increase the downtown vibrancy to encourage people that haven't necessarily visited Jasper in the last few years from the rest of Alberta to come here, be here, and really wanna see what's happening in, in the town. Right now is the time to increase safety for, for residents and for visitors. And I think this is a, a great and um, wonderful way to achieve that. Councillor Keller-Grampy. 
in order to uh, for the business to proceed with their boardwalks kind of right away because this comes back again next week we seem to like every week it's getting closer I wonder should we make a motion for those um, businesses that want to extend their sidewalk work with management and be able to put in their boardwalk or is it too soon it's just that we seem like next week we're the ninth you know we, we just keep getting longer and longer and these businesses are not able to proceed and as you said the parks open you know I mean people are coming so it's going to take them a while to construct and get it done and um, if it has to come back again next week you know I mean it's another week farther out for them to look at it. Uh, thank you for that and I certainly not my intent to to drag this out any longer um, the intent of my direction, and I'm, I'm certainly um, open to a motion if that's required, but uh, having heard from administration that they are satisfied that the Canmore practice can be implemented under our existing bylaw with discretion from administration, I was simply proposing we give that direction um, right now to allow them to proceed so they can tell people, yes, you can do that. Um, they've got Parks Canada on side with respect to the land use issue. So I, I didn't see the need for a motion because everything seems to be in place. But if administration um, feels that they need a motion, then I absolutely um, appreciate your comments, Councillor Kelleher MP, and we should deal with that. But Mr. Furchill, um, do you have any hesitation um, permitting businesses um, upon application to um, commence with building a boardwalk that will extend into an existing parking lane um, under the current bylaw. And it, it is subject, I appreciate that there is not a motif, but there is a requirement that it be aesthetically pleasing in the existing bylaw. So um, you get to be the judge of art. But there you go. Anyway, do you need do you need something more than the direction? Do you need a motion um, from council um, to to give effect to the intent? Um, Your Worship, I just I I don't believe so. It's the only thing I'm I'm thinking is the um, the fee structure, and I'm just reminded that if we do solidify the form of um, walk around that simply takes a parking spot then if we choose to do something larger or bigger later, then those people will be stuck with that form. Um, so as long as council is comfortable that, and the business that applies, if, you know, that's kind of the option that's on the table right now, if something, you know, we've talked about larger, more expanded areas, if that goes ahead in the future, they'll have built something that simply uses the one parking stall only. Um, so it's just, if we want to, if this is the program we want to do, I just want to be careful that if we're going ahead with something, the businesses and we're all clear that's what we're doing in, and that we're not proposing to change it later that um, so the fee structure is the only thing I'm not sure Christine I don't know if you could talk at all about that but um, the boardwalk the Canmore model has $1,203 per year and I'm not sure how that matches with our what we did is we went to a different sort of a style for charging for our um, sidewalk seating opportunities um, and then also the cost of materials will be borne by the business of course so I just I need a chance just to be sure I don't know if Christine or Neil if you guys could speak to that at all um, but I, I don't believe we need a, a separate motion or anything if that's what council will like then we'll simply get the stuff from Camar we'll adopt it make it Jasper and get the application process underway and, and uh, get that out the door as quickly as we can we just have to get it and get it up Okay, um, how about adopt everything but the fee structure? We have a fee structure. Um, we can just say, if you want a boardwalk, it's at your expense. Um, if you're gonna use the public space on the existing sidewalk, we have a fee structure and continue to apply it. Do, do we need to, to do more than that? I, I don't believe so. That would, that would be a simple solution for sure. Councillor DeMota? Well, um, I just, wanted to say that you know there is some blessings with with the social distancing thing particularly in having to face the uh face mayor borrowman from canmore and 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 company um anytime soon and i know that there'll be some gloating coming along with us uh you know using their ideas and their ideas in our community 
I'm, I'm looking forward to that banter, but I'm glad that uh, there are examples out there that we can adapt to our community and down the road, uh, hopefully things that we're doing here could work in others. Councillor Butler. Uh, yeah, thank you. I, I know we've talked at length and I don't want mean to drag this out, but I'd like a little more clarity just on what our thinking is around fee structure because I'm not clear on what Canmore's fees in their program are meant to be addressing. So I think I've heard that businesses would be responsible for building the infrastructure, so the platform and railings or barriers. Do, do we mean by that that they will actually build them or contract that out? They will handle that. They'll, you know, phone a carpenter. Um, and if that's the case, then what are our fees meant to address? Are we notionally thinking that that fee? is to cover the loss of the parking or just our administration or um, what's our goal with respect to fees? And I'm, I know we haven't decided, I'm just asking what Mr. Fritcho sort of, what would your thinking be along those lines? Um, well, your worship through to Councillor Butler, I guess the, um, when we did the sidewalk seating, um, what we did is we looked at uh, trying to figure out what is the value of that space? So essentially uh, institutional zone property is owned by all taxpayers equally and used by all the public equally. Um, so in order to remove that public asset to provide for the exclusive use of a business, um, you need to calculate what is the value of that. And then looking at, um, we, we did an exercise of looking at how big our sidewalks are compared to Banff or Canmore say, or other communities and, trying to determine what that value would be. And then we looked at interior uh, commercial space in Jasper to, to determine what the lease rates are. And then we came up with a fee structure for Jasper. And, um, you know, there's certainly an exercise that could be had when you look at the loss of a parking stall and the vehicle access and all of that. Um, but if we simply adopt what we did um, for the sidewalk seating value, um, then that would simplify the process. If we want to go through an exercise of the vehicle access side of things, that would be a different process. So I'll just, maybe I'll get Neil just to speak a little bit what we charge now. Um, the Canmore model, I think they charge $1,203 a year for the loss of the use of that parking spot. So if I could, I'll just ask Neil just to speak quickly on what we charge downtown. Neil, if you wouldn't mind. At the moment, we charge $100 for the permit and $25 per seat. So it's restaurant style, we charge by the seat, like how many seats there are, like uh, same like what they do in restaurants. Councillor Butler and then Councillor DeMota. Great, so that, that clarifies that and I'm happy to go ahead on that basis. So I, I think what we're hearing is notionally what we're, what the municipality, the municipality's fees is meant to cover um, commercial use of public space. Um, and not addressing in any way park, the loss of parking or anything like that. And I guess I'm comfortable with that. I don't wanna get into the details of how much we charge. Or, you know, I think we have a good bylaw and let's go with that for the time being. I guess the only thing I'd sort of wanna put on record is that we are talking about what I would consider to be pretty advantageous fee structure. Like it's not that expensive, uh, $25 a seat. Um, is very little and we're going to get into a question of well how many seats because um, distancing requirements mean you can't put all that many seats out there and for this year that's probably fair because I think that there's some thinking that we may be also test driving a program that may be looked at for the future I think it's probably fair to say because I know that objections have been raised by some downtown businesses that when we're allowing particularly restaurants and bars to use public space at what is, you know, a pretty low price, we're giving them a considerable advantage. I think we're fair with that this summer during the COVID crisis, but if this were seen in any way as a model for the future, I think we'd have to rationalize those, rationalize those fees and really kind of make sure that we're um, charging a, a fair fee that is fair both to those who want to use the space and to those who choose not to. 
Thank you, Councillor Butler. <clears throat> Excuse me, Councillor Demota. Uh, thank you, Councillor Butler, for addressing what I was uh, going to get to. So. Um, the other thing that uh, was brought to my attention, and I'm still not entirely clear on, and I don't want to cover it right now, but uh, for down the road in case, uh, you know, this works well and we, and we want to keep doing this in the future. Uh, uh, businesses that have had to expand that weren't fulfilling their parking requirements in the community had had to pay into um, our, I forget the actual name of it, but some sort of parking fund. And uh, so it was addressed that if we're taking away uh, parking stalls in the, in the community, that should come at, at an extra cost. However, I'm not, introduced, uh, I'm not interested in going down that road right now. It was just brought to my attention and I thought that I would I'd bring that to, uh, to administration. Thank you. So Mr. Virchow, I, I think there is direction. I just wanted to, um, reiterate um, or maybe say for the first time if I haven't said it before that um, the intent is that the Canmore program is a guide or a model but it's not a template so I mean there might be differences so for example Canmore um, has an application process that is for three years that's not the intent we're doing this for one year so of course make the necessary changes it, it's not that it's a cookie cutter model that that we just put an overlay on Jasper, <clears throat> but it's a guide um, to allow you to to proceed, and I think that's what council has directed. Understood. <clears throat> All right. I think then um, we have concluded with um, agenda item seven point two. Um, before we move on, I have received a request for a brief recess. Um, it is now 11.17, um, let us say eight minutes, we'll reconvene at 11.25. Um, and I will then call a recess. Thank you. Mr. Furcho, you were there. Thank you. All right, I will call us uh, back to order. Um, agenda item eight is bylaws. We simply have a summary, no bylaw decisions. Agenda item nine, we have no request for decision today. Um, correspondence, again, um, a healthy batch of correspondence has been received. Um, I had earlier addressed uh, with Mr. Van Tegum, um, agenda item 10.1. I don't know whether there's anything further on that that can be discussed, but uh, I leave it to any counselor who wishes to make any comment? Um, and perhaps we could just um, go through the list if there are, are items to discuss. Um, there's nothing further on 10.1. Um, 10.2, I'm sorry, go ahead, Councillor Butler. Thank you on 10.1. I, I guess I'm just a little confused about the outdoor beach volleyball because I've seen people in that court using it. So is outdoor beach volleyball currently open or is it currently closed? Um, just in response to that, we do, we're unable to secure that area at this time. So, it, you know, people can access it. Um, and then I'll just, we're going to get back to you on in terms of the, uh, the protocols. Like it's just the, with this COVID, um, when people toss a ball back and forth, same like with golf, how they change some of the rules, like so we just have to make sure all of that is in place and at least posted on signage. So we're going to deal with that shortly here. Councillor Butler. I'd like to just use this as an opportunity to just query something else sort of in a similar sense, because I'm kind of confused about the status of, of um, the playing field, ball diamonds, Centennial Park, that whole area. Um, and the reason I'm confused is uh, some of the gates are locked and some of the gates are unlocked. I regularly try to walk that way. Um, yesterday I walked in one gate, walked across the entire field and couldn't get out. Um, so I had to go find another gate that was open and I'm just curious whether that's just an oversight. Is that space meant to be open? And if so, can we have all the gates open or if not, 
maybe we should have all the gates closed and signed. Okay, thank you. Councillor uh, McGrath. Just in line with Councillor Butler's comments and kind of as a as a note, I have playgrounds, skate park, volleyball, and tennis all all together. And and I think there has been many communities that have been posting signage stating to use at, at the own risk of of the users, which I think is a is a really responsible way to move forward. I'm of course not informed of all of the exact policies that are needed to reopen playgrounds and whatnot. But in relation to um, the comments made by Chief Van Tegum earlier, the, the daily inspections being needed was not um, a COVID response. It's a, it's a regular response. And, and I'm curious, is that something that we log on a regular basis? Is that our daily practice as in previous summers is to have that level of of maintenance and maybe just to have that information. Thank you. Uh, your worship through to Council McGrath. That's correct. The um, the playgrounds are required to be inspected. We have some of the summer staff that are currently not back to work have the courses in playground inspection. And so we have uh, the ability to do weekly inspections. We bring a professional in for an annual uh, inspection on playgrounds. Those are requirements for having playgrounds that are accessible by the public. And then uh, through the summer, because um, people use the playgrounds, there can be, you know, materials deposited on the equipment, there can be broken glass, um, there can be anything in the sites, we have a requirement for daily inspections as well. So um, there's the COVID requirements that have some enhanced levels of cleaning and whatnot that we were looking at, but it's really back to just our standard level of service that we're not back to for those facilities. Just, I guess it comes back to, um, you know, what level of liability we're willing to accept and, and right now it's a I think that's a conversation we'll have this afternoon is a little bit more on service standards for those things but um, uh, there are just standards of practice that we have been wanting to maintain if we want to waiver from that we have to consciously do that. Thank you Mr. Furcho. Councillor keller -Hampi. I'm just curious uh, Mr. Furcho, in winter are the uh, playgrounds inspected? Yes, they are just at a lower level of frequency. So I'm um, not, not necessarily a daily inspection then. I, I can't recall exactly off the top of my head. It's more like a weekly, monthly type inspections, but certainly not to the degree we do in the summertime. And is that done then by the uh, regular maintenance staff? Yes, we, we have staff that um, I can't recall right off the top of my head who has the ticket that I some of the management staff um, have the ability, but certainly wouldn't have the capacity to go out and do the daily um, type of inspection. But we do have the ability to ensure the playground facilities are safe in house. We have that. And like I said, we have a consultant that we bring in annually because that's a standard as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, before we leave uh, agenda item 10.1, the letter with respect to beach volleyball. What I understood um, in response to Councillor Butler's question is that it is technically closed but not secured so people still get in there and use it, I presume is the answer. With respect to the letter, it's addressed to um, Mayor and Council, but can we ask that um, administration, probably through uh, Mr. Van Tegum, but not necessarily Mr. Van Tegum, respond to the letter writer directly with, with details. It, it is somewhat out of the realm of council's ability to answer those detailed questions. Your Worship, what I'd like to do is I'll propose that um, later this week, administration have some clarity on some of these things and we'll provide information on tennis courts, um, volleyball courts, the skate park, et cetera, the ball field. So, so that you know information will be available. Also um, the gates, um, but right now, I think what you've said is accurate. It's just simply a lot of information out there and we do have some gates locked and unlocked and some facilities we can secure and can't secure and people do get in. So that's kind of where we're at right now with the requirements around COVID. Um, it's kind of made it a little different this year. Right. Thank you for that. Um, agenda item 10.2. Um, 
a letter about uh, shopping local, um, but with a specific um, request that um, the council might change its procurement policy um, to direct more local procurement. Um, and I, I, again, direct that somewhat to administration. My understanding is that we are bound by um, provincial legislation um, with respect to some of our procurement practices and cannot um, necessarily favor local suppliers. But Mr. Furcho, can you speak to that? Um, Your Worship, yes, it's, it's, um, this comes up in local governments all the time. Um, there's two sides to that. One is a local business that has bricks and mortar in town pays taxes and their tax dollars then go to procure supplies within the community. And so there is some sense that there should be some favoritism towards those businesses that that does uh, come up from time to time. And then trying to implement that as a policy is where the difficulty lies. So what we do is we always offer the opportunity for local businesses to participate in our, our purchasing. And so for this case with our paper, we, we buy paper through, it's a master agreement through the RMA, which we get our insurance from. That's where we get things like we can access our cleaning products, our tires, our uh, all kinds of supplies. And what they do is they put out a bid process where suppliers can um, bid. And then we simply go to those suppliers. Um, we don't pay the supplier, we pay RMA and they pay the supplier. And that way we get it at a severe discount um, to get uh, supplies to Jasper. And um, those companies that bid then are able to sell uh, across Alberta. And, and so it makes it worthwhile for them to sell at a, a deep discount. So we've provided that to the local merchants for things like paper. Um, so in this case with the paper supply, um, when we need paper uh, quickly, we will always buy locally. Um, but when we're doing a purchase of a, like a case lot of like a pallet of paper, then we do go to that supplier for those large purchases. So uh, we've provided this vendor with that information. And then in terms of um, any kind of a, um, a preference for shop local, um, when you start building that into a procurement policy and you send it out into the internet that you will give a favor of 10% or whatever to a local business, then that's met with objection from other suppliers throughout the province and in other jurisdictions, which are challenged. And then we typically, most municipalities have to back off on that and go back to, it's simply low bid. And um, when you just need things quickly and it doesn't meet the bid um, levels for purchasing, we will shop local. So it's a blend of all those things. And, and what, you, what was raised in the letter, you know, we we're very aware of that and, and the need to shop local. And we always try to offer those opportunities as a municipality to the bricks and mortar businesses that pay taxes here for sure. Thank you, Mr. Furcho. Uh, Councillor Butler. I appreciate that everything Mr. Furcho said is true. Um, and I do understand that. Uh, some of you may have seen my post about the red. Sorry. Oh, something cut in on my system. Sorry. Um, I all speak that that's true. And I understand we have obligations under you know, under provincial regulation to um, buy at the best price possible. It's just that I don't, I'm not really convinced that our practice across the organization is consistent. And um, I think there may be uh, more of a question of convenience coming into some purchasing decisions than is necessarily apparent. And for example, I'm pretty sure that when we need to buy a bit of lumber to do a small project in one of the parks or something that we probably just zip over uh, to our local building center and buy that material. I don't think we quote it out. I, I think we need to get the job done. And so we get the job done and we do shop locally, say in a case like that. And another obvious example, when food is needed, clearly we go local. Um, but in some areas of purchase, we basically simply don't. And I wonder to some extent if that isn't just a question of convenience. Um, and so I'm not convinced that our policy, that we could not offer more flexibility by policy if we chose. And I'd like to see us um, have a look at our procurement policy, if that's the appropriate policy 
through that lens. Um, I know we recently did update our procurement policy, but I also know that we didn't really have a look at it through that lens of where can we, um, while adhering to provincial standards, where can we support our local tax paying businesses? And um, we can't do it right now because we have too much on our plates, but I'd like to see us have a look at that. Thank you, uh, Councillor Butler. I, I certainly share the, the sentiment of shop local and encourage it among the population generally uh, and including the municipality, but recognizing that we are subject to provincial laws as well. And, and some of them are created for a very good reason that um, in some jurisdictions, if a, if, for example, a municipality um, needs fleet vehicles um, and the mayor's brother owns the dealership, <laughs> you, you just can't go there. Um, but that's not to say that there is not greater latitude um, and we could take a look at that. So I, I share Councillor Butler's view that it, it's worth taking a look at to see where we can um, adapt practices, but recognizing that we do have to be compliant with provincial legislation. So as as time unfolds and we begin to become a little more stable in our operations um, as we move into the recovery phase, maybe this is something that can come back before council. Mr. Furchow. Um, Your Worship, just to be clear, um, just back to Councillor Butler's comment, and, and certainly that is the truth. When we need some lumber, we will shop local. When we need some paper, we shop local. If we're um, building a, a brand new building, um, the procurement of that goes out for bid. So. Those are, you know, that's the difference. And like it's the, when we buy a pallet of paper, that's, we do go to our, our supplier uh, through the RMA for the best price when we need paper quickly, envelopes, whatever we do shop local, absolutely. So that's kind of the difference um, between those two. And I just want to be clear that we do shop local um, if I wasn't before that. Yeah. Thank you. Um, agenda item. 10.3 is uh, a letter from the Jasper Local Food Society. Uh, Mr. Furcho, is there any change to the water situation for the community gardens? Um, Your Worship, again, that'll be a conversation for this afternoon, then we'll provide more clarity out um, later this week on, on all those things. It's um, back to our um, summer staffing component that comes with some of the ability for us to do the irrigation of the irrigation lines are fairly, uh, I don't want to say it the wrong way, they're, they're cheap plastic lines that are under shallow berry underneath the ground and typically prone to leaks. And so when we charge them in the spring, um, there's one person's job all summer running around fixing the leaks in that system. Um, and, and so we currently don't have that individual back yet. Thank you for that. Anything further from any councillor? Councillor McGrath? I just wanted to make mention of this agenda item, topic number 10.3 in, in relation to water in the community garden. And, you know, I'm only one of seven, but the community garden is a really important piece of our community and local food is a really important piece of, of life right now, especially during these times. So it has, local food is included in our strategic priorities of, of council and and I'm really looking forward to having the conversations with administration to discuss um, a number of different items, but this is of, of significant importance to, to myself and the community members in Jasper. So thank you very much to Mrs. Roberts for writing in. Thank you for that, uh, Councillor McGrath. Um, agenda item 10.4, um, there are six letters all relating to um, public spacing in public places um, for information more than anything, although they, they may come back into the discussion um, with the direction from council today. This may be returning for further discussion um, beyond what we directed this morning. So those are part of the record, unless anybody wants to speak to any one of them, Councillor Butler. Just want to take this opportunity to kind of come back to the earlier conversation 
around <clears throat> our consensus that we're may be open to consideration of some traffic flow restrictions on Patricia Street. And I want to point out that in our little community, um, and particularly in these really difficult times and where we know that businesses are going to close um, because they're not in this crisis, um, I want to reiterate that I think we need to be really cautious about implementing measures that may be um, clearly advantageous to some kinds of businesses over some other kinds of businesses, but also really advantageous to some businesses um, in some parts of town versus other parts of town. And that's why in um, most jurisdictions when changes are made to traffic flow, um, narrowing of traffic flow, these kind of things, there's usually a very extensive public consultation process with affected businesses. There's also very often business improvement fees and um, um, uh, area specific taxes put into place to address these things. And then the, mar and the market adjusts, you know, so you see areas of the city that high tra have high traffic flow, um, their taxation or their tax assessment rates are higher and those where there's not, and we don't have time for any of that. We could restrict traffic flow to one lane of traffic, both on Connaught and Patricia Street. And we would, in doing that, be offered and, and allow businesses to use up the rest of the space for seating. And in doing that, we would give a vast advantage to um, businesses on Connaught just because they happen to be on a street that has so very much more space. And in doing that, we might put um, businesses on Patricia Street out of business. So we need to pay attention to social distancing and do what we can but we also have to make sure that whatever measures we take, as far as is humanly possible, are fair to all concerned um, and tread very carefully if we're going to go down the road of uh, reducing traffic lanes or traffic flow. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Butler. Uh, agenda, if Councillor DeMota. Well, I just wanted to say that there's one particular letter that was addressed to myself and uh, Mr. Furcho, but I think that was uh, for information for the rest of council as well. And I just wanted to say that I appreciate the info uh, coming in and, uh, you know, we're taking it all and, and trying to address what's going to be best, um, you know, as an overall plan to go forward. So I thank you everybody for uh, the information that you're giving. Thank you for that, Councillor DeMota. Um, agenda item 10.5, um, a couple of uh, late arriving letters dealing with um, child care and out of school care, which was resolved a week ago, but um, those letters form part of the public record now. If there is no further discussion required on those, uh, I'll turn to agenda item 11. Other new business? Is there any other new business from any councillor? Councillor reports? Councillor McGrath and then Councillor Kelleher. Last week I attended the community conversations and the AGM for the Jasper Community Team Society and we have some Two new board members which is exciting for the society and tomorrow I will be in attendance at the community conversations as well. Thank you. Councillor Kelleher Empey. Last week Councillor Wilson and I attended the community features uh, board meeting um, at that meeting uh, we made a motion to accept the um, agreement from Western Diversification so the loan applications are now open and the funds are available for businesses that qualify for the uh, rough funding, the uh, relief funding. I also last Friday, I had the pleasure of attending um, with Justin Reamer, the Deputy Minister of um, Western Diversification with Chamber of Commerce in Canmore and Hoteliers in Canmore, um, Banff Hotel Association, um, Banff um, Tourism, Jasper Tourism, and uh, Community Futures um, talking about um, mountain communities and the challenges we're facing. And this morning I noticed that there, 
has been $1.5 million given to Travel Alberta um, for funding to help um, promote the summer. Uh, one of the big concerns came forward was that was raised was the, especially from partners in the South, was that their property taxes um, were even higher because of their uh, assessments the year before that had come into play and they wanted, they asked, they were asking um, Mr. Reamer if he would propose to the government to give the municipalities some money to help towards taxes um, for the big players within the area. It was a very interesting meeting. So hopefully some more news will be coming forth. Thank you for that, Councillor keller Councillor DeMota. Well, I, this wasn't a, a council initiative or a councillor initiative, but um, on Sunday I had reached out to the community via uh, social media to uh, partake in some uh, pot banging from uh, 7 p.m. to 7.05 uh, to honor uh, the people that uh, have helped keep Jasper safe and to those who have worked through, uh, you know, quite diligently uh, through this uh, whole pandemic uh, while a lot of areas were closed. So it's, uh, it was a tribute to them and uh, I'd like to thank everybody for their continuous efforts. Um, on my, uh, the next point is I'd, I'd like council to meet uh, in the near future on as a, a strategic uh, priorities committee. I feel that right now we have an opportunity to address some um, revenue potential um, and and maybe address governments at higher levels on um, old initiatives that we'd started a while ago. And I wanted to just basically see where the rest of council had sat on that. Um, I've recently reached out to the improvement district to see if we can get some funding for our public washroom. Um, and when we discussed that with uh, Parks Canada, they wanted to get some of that information on that request. And I didn't want to appear that I was acting individually and I'd like to have a concerted effort if it's uh, the will of council to pursue uh, maybe having our public washroom open um, and where we can get the funding to do that. And um, right now we're, we still have a lot of people driving through the community or coming here on day visits and uh, as well as our community members uh, that may need the, the public washrooms, but I don't think that the full ex, uh, expense of operating that should fall on local taxpayers entirely. Particularly, again, as I stated before, when uh, we did, uh, those other agencies saw the need for that in the community and uh, thus contributed to some of that funding. So I would like to explore, uh, you know, to keep knocking on that door um, so that we're not solely um, burdened with the operation of that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Tavota. Uh, I could just report that on, on Friday, um, I attended a tourism town hall put on by Tourism Jasper. It was a, a, a Zoom meeting. I, I think there were roughly 100 attendees. Um, Mr. Jackson, on behalf of Tourism Jasper, presented um, a, a modeling um, expectation, um, as he said, um, it's not right, but it's not wrong either. Um, nobody knows for sure, but it's it's a bit of a forecast of what might um, come this way in, in terms of economic recovery in particular. Um, I think, uh, Councillor DeMota, you, you mentioned earlier that you couldn't find that similar presentation on our website, but I, I understand that um, last Friday's presentation was essentially the same. It might be slightly updated, but that is available on YouTube um, and you should be able to find it through uh, the link through Tourism Jasper. Um, as I say, it was, it was well attended. Um, Mr. Goss spoke on behalf of Tourism Jasper. I spoke on behalf of the municipality and um, Ms. Pam Clark spoke on behalf of the superintendent who had to be away. Um, and we all answered questions um, from the public at the end. Um, those questions directed to the municipality related to uh, public washrooms as Councillor DeMota has just indicated and um, to 
the ongoing um, issue of public spacing in public places and where we stood on that. <clears throat> so just out of interest, but it, it was a it was a great presentation. I thought um, limited in questions, and that might be a reflection of the thoroughness of the presentation itself. Uh, but it was a it was a time well spent. I think uh, on behalf of the community. So my thanks to Tourism Jasper. I I noticed that. Um, Councillor McGrath was one of those ones um, online. I'm not sure whether other councillors um, had that opportunity. I couldn't scroll through the entire list, but uh, a, a very useful community event um, from my perspective. Other than that, um, throughout the weekend, I have um, done a host of radio and television interviews. I can't remember how many um, and even what, what sources, and there are more to come. Um, all focused, of course, on the reopening from yesterday. Uh, and so the message is out and the message continues to be um, that we are open, um, plan ahead, come with a COVID kit, um, expect some changes in operations and um, some facilities may not have all amenities open and camping, of course, not open until June 21st. But otherwise, it is safe and responsible for us to welcome guests again to our community and we're doing that. And that is my report. Is there anything else by way of council reports? If not, then agenda item 13, upcoming events. Um, we have a meeting um, this afternoon at uh, 1.30. Um, tomorrow is the Jasper Community Team Weekly Conversations at 1 p.m. Is there anything else upcoming? of which councillors are aware. All right, if not, um, I will then entertain a motion to adjourn. Councillor Demota. All in favor? Thank you, Councillor Jerno. We are adjourned at 1155. And I will see council again this afternoon. And thank you to all of the, the public members. Uh, I think when I last checked it was over 100, so um, a sizable gallery yet again. So thank you all for your attendance and goodbye for, for now. Thanks everyone. Thanks everyone.